since I have those. International Falls Coochie County Airport Commission meeting for November 28, 2018 to order. Any public comment? Hearing none, we'll go to the minutes of the October 24, 2018 meeting. Pleasure with the minutes. Moved. Second by Commissioner Briggs. Second by Commissioner McBride. Discussion on the motion of the minutes. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion is carried. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Go to the uh, financial statement and uh, have uh, the lease for PETA $2,541.50. And then we have unpaid bills of $34,481.90. It's our regular operation. And then on phase two of the terminal project, we have claims of $422,015.66. And then on the first phase of the runway reconstruction from SEH, we have $51,460. And on phase two of the runway reconstruction, we have claim from the Short Alley Hendrickson for 87490 And then on page six of the financial statement, those bills that have been paid uh, under a previous approval, $10,786.78. Another of $2,134.90. What is the Commission's pleasure with the bills? I'd like to not pay any of them, Mr. Chair, but that's not an option. So I, can do that. <laughs> I, I don't know if the plane is big enough to carry back all this money. <laughs> <laughs> We're good, busy. I'll say. Motion by Commissioner Pavlik, second by Commissioner Nevinen. Approve the bills. So discussion. Please. Yeah. Phase one to phase two. Are we have funding now. We have to tell that right now. Uh, we we, the, the funding is there. Um, we haven't we got the cash. We haven't got the cash. And so we'll be applying for reimbursed we have to put the money out first and so I think as you get down to page page 12 are, are we at a million dollars in arrears for the city we shouldn't be that much. <coughs> you think we've re received some payments? I just received roughly $5,400 just on okay, so Wednesday. Probably closer to $600,000. Yeah. All right. On the, uh, on the claims, <coughs> there's a bill in here for the city for three thousand dollars you know what that was for uh the sand for the sand the sand for the sand oh okay uh, i think it was 200 1300 cubic yards mm -hmm. uh, mr chair please mm -hmm. the 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 key bill is that for Cairo? Is yeah for it's not it's not rental or anything like that. That is that is our contract with our contract with for service for, for service for services. Yeah. 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 Okay. What's a sand bunker? 
It's a building over by the cold weather test where oh, we keep okay. all the well, we store it. All right, all right. We're putting it yeah. on the runway. Yeah. 200 cubic yards of winter. Okay. And the uh, Brokaw Jan Janitorial, there's two claims there. Is one of them for phase the phase two of the terminal? Oh, one is for B3, and then the other oh, one, one is for janitorial. Okay, B3. Right. I split them both separately. Yep, very good. And then uh, the one for Myers Glass, the last the question I would have. Uh, that one is? For $1,000, was there? A uh, door, it was a new door actually waited over there for stall two on the art building. Oh, on the earth? All right. Okay. There's two from Myers. KK Myers and then we said Myers class. One is the installation and the other is the part. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Further questions or discussions with regard to the claims or the financial statement? Question on the uh, claims and the financial statement. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is carried. And claims are approved as well as the financial statement. Thank you. We'll go to uh, the engineer's report and a terminal update. And is that going to be Steve or both or Rick? We'll try to speak up loud and clear. Uh, we are at the uh, on the agenda for the engineer's report. Terminal update and we have Rick and Steve here to uh, give us an update. Scurry like a true but uh, crew we got here buddy. <laughs> I bet. I know them. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, we could, uh, I don't know, I'll start with Rick and he could do maybe an update on where construction progress is at on uh, the current phase two edition and then we could backtrack and see where any outstanding ends from phase one or phase two might be at. He didn't have any gray hair when he started. No, it's been a tough road. Yeah. Uh, they poured the slab last week, so they're sheetrocking under the SIPS panels and framing walls. They're going to pour the ramp from phase one to phase two today. And tomorrow they're going to pour the outside apron on the air side. And then the plumbers will come in later next week and do their rough-ins with the electricians and sheetrock behind that. And then they're going to keep moving on the outside, just move the ground top machine around the on the ground and warm it up and pour it. So, yeah, it was snow on the if I could, Mr. Chair, was snow on the forecast? Does that affect a, a pour like that? They built a shelter, a little bean too, off of the building. Okay. They're hoping that'll keep. As long as it ain't a heavy snow, it should keep it off. Okay. They wanted to pour it today, but they figured the ground needed to heat up a little more before they did it one more day. So they're using a ground thaw <coughs> heater machine that uh, just runs a hot water coil out onto the ground to keep that warm. It's covered up with insulin yeah. blankets. We've been keeping that on for, well, a week. A week, yeah. a little more maybe. There was an issue with the local cement plant. Uh, oh, that's right. We had a boiler failure, so we weren't receiving any cement that we had hoped to get that done a week and a half ago. But uh, with that shut down, with well, probably a week to mm -hmm. a week and a half, by the time they got that boiler repaired, so that they could heat their aggregates and things to get it out to the site and temperatures that we need to make the pour. So we lost a little bit of time on the slab, getting that poured inside, and then trying to get that outside stuff done. But yeah, so we'll, we'll make sure it's clean, safe, warm, not affecting the curing process of the concrete. Keep 
that heat down it for probably at least seven days to yeah, get the uh, cylinder break that says we're out of strength. You know, that's sufficient enough to carry it through. See, I had a couple questions for you yesterday, and I'm trying to. Uh, the one, yeah, the one was a schedule. That was just a mistake. I had okay, the yeah, same thing listed twice. Took it on the schedule. Yeah, and then the other one was. <coughs> and a question about the office space. Oh what yes, if I had the plan, the, yes, the plans. Yep. And so I do have some things we can talk about that maybe once they're done. Okay. Um, both the office space and the conference room. Very good. All right. Wasn't there an issue? I mean, what what with, with the roof? Are we going to be temporary? Oh, for the wedding? No, they're coming next week. They got all the, the, panels, the panels made. Yeah, panels are made. That big machine broke too when it was real cold, so it delayed them a half a week. They had to go back, fix it, come back. They got them made, and they're just waiting for Hammerland. They got to do a little more blocking on the front edge, and they're going to do that this week. And they're coming up Monday to start. So they put that panels. outer skin on. Yeah, that's on. Oh, no, they got they got a they got the temporary temper the weather barrier underneath on. Yeah. And then they'll put the metal on next week. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's coming along. We uh, certainly did have a, a little bit of a stall out, waiting for some cement, uh, some of the machine, you know, breaking down on the working panels and things. But uh, the, I think that inside cement slab was was hard on us, uh, losing really production on the inside to keep things going. So we're back in action now, though. Said, uh, kind of getting rough ends going, uh, which, yeah, is probably a good lead in it. We wanted to talk about that uh, inside uh, and then space revisions. And we're, we're at that point, we, we're, we're ready. We're ready to start making those revisions. Do so you want to pull up here? And <clears throat> um, so there, there's two of these they go around. So first, uh, first page is <clears throat> some options for conference room furniture. So you see there's three options for a table, kind of low, medium, high, and then three options for essentially like the conference room table chairs, and then three options for side chairs that would be for. Uh, I'm gonna take care of you older. Uh, I appreciate gentlemen. it, yeah. <laughs> so there's, did everybody get two sheets? <clears throat> so you can see uh, it's, it's possible to spend a lot of money on conference room furniture if you'd like. Uh, <clears throat> but um, so the, and then the next sheet shows kind of a, a recommended layout. Um, we had talked about this is the 12 by 4 size conference room table. Um, you can see that you know you could potentially go a little bit longer, um, but I think just to have good circulation around that, we wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Um, so I think it shows <clears throat> ten seats around the conference room table, which is kind of a tight uh, configuration there. Um, you know, and you could go back down to eight, which is probably a more comfortable fit around that table. Uh, so. This is a piece I guess we don't necessarily need to decide on today, but I wanted to get in front of you and let you understand um, what some options might be. And if you've got some feedback, we could take that back to our interiors folks and they could get some more information about a particular direction. But um, Can you give us the, the width, length, data is not on here? Right, so so all these would be available in that 12 foot by 4 foot size, or you know bigger if you wanted to. Um, they're come in typically two foot increments. Um, so this uh, just this one is this at is this at scale? But which one are you on? Or this oh okay. It, it should be I'm not sure if it actually it's came in at scale, scale but it should be at scale yeah. Right. And that would be a twelve foot right yeah so what's shown there is a twelve foot by four foot table. Quite a range in prices, then. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I think Bob maybe has a better sense about where the funding for this comes from. I, I'm not sure if this is covered under the bonding funds or if this is a, a local expense. 
So it would be a piece we could probably need to verify just for you to understand that. I, unfortunately, I don't have that. So we need to talk to Bob Kors. Um, Lee, would you make a note uh, that to have Bob give us a uh, update on furniture for the conference room if that's covered under uh, state bonding funds? Yep, yep, I can do that. Thank you. But so, as you'll note, there's um, just to make sure this is clear. There's kind of two kinds of chairs. So the, the top row would be the, probably the eight or ten chairs that would be around the table, and then the bottom row would be kind of for attendees. Uh, so it would be kind of the side chairs. Those are less expensive than the Earl of the Ten chairs. So you can pack some more of those in. How about something in a metal bleacher? Folding <laughs> <laughs> chairs from St. Thomas. <laughs> Have people bring their own folding chairs. Yeah. Well, this table we're sitting at was actually constructed here locally, and it's been here like all 26 years. I've oh, been yeah. here yeah. long before that, so it's pretty amazing. <clears throat> so, yeah, and that, and especially for the table, that certainly is an option to have something um, custom made for you. Um, typically, you know, custom made is, is not going to be less expensive than the options you're seeing here. But if, if you've got somebody that you want to work with, that would definitely be an option. Yep. Justin, you were mentioning uh, height. We were discussing it, a table height or a chair height. I didn't know, but um, but the height. I guess I'm not sure what I was saying. Right? Right. He was talking. Those the are the, the chairs. low end, middle, not the height. Though. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, kind of price range. Yeah, sorry. That was price range. <laughs> Thank you. It's a cost that gets higher. So then, the, the table is designed to be have both uh, power and, and data kind of fed integral to it. Uh, and then okay. the conference room does have um, okay. so see, there's a, a credenza piece on the end that's got the little sink and that's where the controls for the AV would be and then oh, there's a mounting for uh, an integral screen on the opposite of the There's something to be said for that because you can see the issues we do have here. <clears throat> well, unlike anything, as soon as you install it, it'll be obsolete. So. Yeah, that's not the truth. Would, um, what would a chair like this run? Do you have any idea? Is well, I mean, I think that's kind of... Um, um, Menards. Menards. Really? Yes. They've served, they've served you well on the years. Yeah. We've probably had these about eight years now. <coughs> they might need to pay probably 150 bucks a chair. What, uh, what's the distance Estimating between call and away, I call. What is that distance? Table with five. five. It's about five. Four, it's all five. 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 five feet. Yeah. Right now, oh well, yeah. With the lights, those five. are four foot lights, mm -hmm. so you know it's probably pushing six or a little more maybe. And what do you have for total width here? That's uh, closer to here. Right. Probably. So just trying to get an idea that if you're, you know, we look at the table size and we're discussing what we have here as far as a setup, or um, if we're if we're relatively, uh, depending on if we, would we have a speaker system in there, uh, or would or would go that the center of the room and not have the mics? I'm just looking at the, the area that we have. If if we're going to be reducing, if if we're this tight with this many people right now, with with this square, right? Is that if we start reducing this, I don't have an easy solution, but we're going to get real cozy real fast. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think four foot is too small. I don't know if you can go, can you go five or six, or is it going two foot? Is that what you're saying? The concern is the space, the wall space. The, well, the length I think goes in probably to, well, honestly, they're fairly custom, so you could probably get it in just about any size you wanted. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, in terms of the length, like Steve was saying, you can kind of see this is four foot, so. So the table is going to be longer than this table is, and probably at that end it's going to be a little bit wider, but obviously it doesn't flare out. So I'll be close to twelve. Um, these are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So I mean it would come out really to where the light fixtures start over there. There you go. I think I'd want to have just as you show it here at least be able to see ten people around it. And then, and yeah, then 
and then with the concern, and I appreciate the concern about the, 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 the space around the table. I mean, you, you're gonna, you, you, I would think that you'd want to have a bigger table versus being concerned about space outside the table. Does that make sense? That, I mean. <clears throat> yeah, so, and then I think you can see the kind of way the room is laid out that um, the, the table is not centered in the room. Right. Okay. Um, it's kind of lined up on the credenza and, and the um, so I mean we could certainly those couple chairs are there disappear and we could you know, easily make the table six inches wider on either sure. side so you can go to like a, a twelve by five um, and that probably you still have enough circulation for those chairs along that side. Circulation. <laughs> Water <Watching> space. <clears throat> Yeah, that's uh, drawn at a four foot uh, dimension, four by 12 right now. You know, the length you can arguably, you know, increase a little bit to have, have some elbow room if there are 10 people at the table, table four on each side. You know, I'm just, again, visual looking at this light, that's four feet wide, right? <coughs> so it is, it's cozy. Yeah, that's uh, five would be better if it could fit in that room and still, you know, get around. Pull your chair back, get up, and yeah. <coughs> oh, I mean, that, that said, like most dining room tables aren't four feet wide, so it's. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say a minimum of five or six feet with. I think the, uh, the chairs around the outside could easily be um, that on ignition looks like it's got a padded seat for I don't know what uh, <coughs> the ones around the table you may want to have the uh, rollers but if we could find something like this I think that, that would serve us well it's not going to be we'll used every day or this right. probably does get this is a whole lot more than that's going to be used. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm thinking um, if if uh, Kita is going to be out there and cold weather testing, you may have groups in there from cold weather testers and that. that uh, so a comfortable chair would be good. <clears throat> well, as I said. Um, this is coming up. I don't think we need an answer on this today. Okay. Um, so I think you can get some clarification from Bob about how this gets funded. All right. And I can confirm that like a 12 by 5. I don't think I'd go wider than 5. And honestly, I don't think you really need wider than 5. Um, so well, this is, uh, you know, this run that people are, you know, spreading papers and things out, probably one right a little more than two. Yeah. I mean, you're 20. 20 uh, 628, that's 11 out 30, but 22 plus. Yeah, probably probably but this is the 26 inches away. Kind of gives you an idea. Yeah, if it was two foot, it'd be a little tighter. So, yeah, I, I would agree to get five feet, that's going to be a little more comfortable. Yeah. And still give the audience room. Well, if you go six foot wide, and you're only 16 feet wide, and you got 10 foot, so you only got four foot on each side, that gets some cozy on the, right. on the wall. Chairs. And a, well, that extra six inches makes a difference in size. It does. You know, I mean, you want it comfortable for the audience too, because yeah. uh, we, we, we routinely have people in both those bodies. So, so just a thought. <clears throat> yep. Yep. We'll leave it to you to figure something out. <laughs> well, and I, and I, I'm not sure, but I think some of these side chairs are, are perhaps stackable. So I mean, you could maybe have some set aside. So if you're Thinking you have a big crowd, you can maybe pack a few more of these side chairs in there than you would normally want. But you know. um, so that that is that piece. And then on the flip side of conference room plan is the uh, modifications that I've been working with Kyra on for the uh, office space in the building. So you can see um, we've reconfigured it so there's two private offices and then like kind of reception area as you walk in, and then the that room 185C, which is currently located as storage, um, the rest of that is the 175, which was space that originally that whole area was building storage. So I've 
what I understand, and there could have been more developments, is that TSA has indicated that they might want some of that 175 for their storage space, and then the KEDA would take the remainder of that. Yeah, but I, just looking at the size, the way I originally thought that TSA would have a, a smaller portion and we would have the larger portion just because of the KEDA and airport in there, we're going to need more mile space. <clears throat> yeah, so so honestly, that, that six foot dimension is, you know, could be anything. So I, I, I think between you all and TSA, and, and I guess at this point, I'm not sure that TSA is able to take the space because GSA has to approve anything that TSA does. And Was TSA need more room for it? Yeah, and then there's and there's security component too, too, correct? And there's storage models. Yeah. Storage. So I guess the thing is for us. I, I think that you know we could maybe hold off honestly on, on that last wall there and maybe hold off on doing any finishes in that room until You're speaking, speaking of the center wall here that right. this can be that it's not gonna be a weight bearing or anything in right. It can be moved. Okay. Um so I mean obviously the sooner the better on that, but I think um, if we if everybody's comfortable with the rest of the layout, we can go ahead and issue the, the documents for that. Yes, I guess. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I was just gonna say keep us posted, especially at TSA. I could see where that could be a you know, really a problem with having having it mixed with us. Unless there was a separate yeah, it's, separate, it's, it's, separate it's, way to go to it or right. and and to, and to be clear, it's, it, it, you're right. It's, 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 not, it's not a it's not a personnel issue of getting along. It's just it's the protocols for TSA, exactly. um, for the security protocols. As you know, it's always <coughs> they don't move anything in and out of there without right? so, Yeah. I mean, and they, they, they don't know. There, there would be separate separate doors to both yeah. spaces, so it's not as though you're literally well, sharing the space. Security, yeah. Security. Security. So, and, and they don't even know if they're going to get the funding. So I mean, who knows? Yeah. So on the the. Um, Mention here of from this wall over to the outside wall is what 26 and 5, about 31 feet. Um, to that first demising wall, is, yes, yeah, it's about 26, 26, uh, yeah, so about 31 is right. 31, yeah, what would the dimensions of this room be? I think it's 18. Wide. Are these what, what are these nine inch tiles? Yeah, the one that, uh, twelve foot four inch foot. Are they twelve? Yeah, let's say this is about about twenty eight feet. Yeah. Oh, good. Very comparable to the Kita office space. Yeah. What's your tape measure? What's your idea? I was looking at it. Uh, <laughs> right. Where's your thermometer? Yeah, your tape measure. And, and the, uh, <laughs> the door widths are, are all, they're all three foot, ADA widths. Yep. approved. Okay. Other questions uh, with regard to the... Because <clears throat> what maybe one thing to note, so you can see the, the private, the dividing wall between the two private offices um, meets up with the window, so it's aligned with the window mullion that's part of that, it's already there. But that, that does have some uh, acoustical issues more sound transmission because of that condition than you might normally expect. So just so folks are aware of that, and you have that kind of condition. And and the uh, that 185B, mm -hmm. six foot. So that's going to be a office. Is going to be about this. It's a small office, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's comparable to the key has now. Is that right? Is that, yeah. is that what that one is? Okay. The noise issue, do you, do you foresee that as a problem? Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's going to be a problem. I, I don't think, uh, but I mean, if there's you know, sort of privileged information or something like that, I mean, it potentially could be an issue. I mean, if you're having a, a personnel discussion in one office and you don't want the person in the next office to hear it, then different. And, and there's doors on every one of those uh, offices and everything, it's all included? Yeah. Okay. So the doors would be solid, they're not hollow, so that'll help with sound. The wall itself would be sound attenuated, and it's, uh, I assume, just a normal, you know, four-inch wall, five-inch wall, um, up to structure, not just above the ceiling? Uh, we could do it in two ways. I mean, you can, 
So you have the, the sound attenuation insulation that's in the wall itself, and that helps with the, the acoustical separation. And as Steve said, you can either run that up to the deck above, or you can kind of lay then some uh, insulation back that kind of prevents the sound from bouncing through the ceiling. Either of those really work fairly well. As I said, I think it's just literally at that window volume, there's kind of a weak point in the system. The rest of the wall should be fine. Yeah, because we're going to have to neck it down uh, to try to get to the thickness, you know, which is relatively thin. The window volume itself is butting into, unless you're willing to live with seeing that from the outside extend past. I mean, it all be finished in the same, you know, kind of dark bronze brake mill or a clear, whatever we're doing on that job, but we can insulate the cavity as well. I mean, you know, it, it, it may be worthwhile simply because even besides the business aspects, which you know, we have to be confidential, any any personnel issues, things like that, you have to have an area that is we we can be confident is not you're not hearing it. We're talking a big cost if we had to do the ceiling. The ceiling would be the addition. No, I um, I, I would say we we would do that regardless. Oh. I'm, I'm just saying, literally, where that wall meets the mullion, there's a weak point in the system. Yeah. There's not really anything we can do to improve that. That's, that's understood. Yeah. yeah, our recommendation would probably be to take that wall all the way up. Um, as Dustin pointed out, we certainly can lay horizontally on top of the ceiling tiles, some acoustical insulation. Um, we followed maybe on past projects, people that are going up that ceiling to do some maintenance from time to time. You know, move that around, it doesn't quite get put back in place right, and you know, it becomes an issue down the road. It's just, you know, the wall went to deck here, probably in a bit better shape. And, you know, I mean, it's it's not unlike maybe a hospital or an exam room. You may hear, you know, some muffled sounds or voices in the next room. You should not be understanding what they're talking about or saying, however. If there's a concern to raise it to a decibel, you know, sound rating that's important enough, then you can look at maybe cross stripping that wall with some horizontal furring, creating more of a, a sound wall out of it. <clears throat> yeah, but I guess I would say the, the treatment that we're talking about is pretty standard in these office situations. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Question on uh, the 185D. Does that wall that's kind of in the the five in the middle there, just mm -hmm. above the 185D? Yep. I mean, is it putting there is that kind of an extra cost? Are we better off to run that wall straight across? Um, you mean just the, the little jog in it there? Instead of having the jog in it, <clears throat> um, I, it I think it makes more sheetrock work and taping and all that. Yeah, I, I think it's, a, it's probably a pretty modest. I mean, it, it's essentially the same amount of material. But just a little bit. Five foot isn't very big. The copier might get in there and might not. The copiers are getting bigger all the time. Or would you? I would just move this this wall here, move it up, and make it even all the way across. Oh, that's, I'm not going to live there, so I'm going <laughs> to leave it to Kyra and Paul to uh, to decide whether or not. Uh, that's a good move. And the, the reason that uh, I, I put that jog in there was just to give a little bit more room for the desk itself, the reception desk, and make sure you still have good circulation in front of it. Or I, I think you know that five foot width, so you, you get kind of a standard two foot cabinet depth in there. Uh, there, what's well, it's not shown here, but there actually is a little bit of cabinetry that's already uh, been in the project uh, for that space. Uh, so that would be located there. So you have two foot that, and then a three foot circulation zone is is. And it makes it handy for her. I can see she turns right around from her desk. Everything's right there. Well, she'd have, have to get up and kind of walk around the. Uh, but yeah, all, it's, it's all about you, kind of. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you need. <laughs> so what, what's what's the other desk? Is that a reception desk or what is that? The two-fold desk. Yeah, it just be. Just the 180s. I think it was that 185 reads come in. That would be Kyra's desk. Okay, then we have two offices. Yep. One for Joanne. Yep. It's kind of very similar to what we already have. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's kind of what we did. I guess I was, I was forgetting about Joanne. I was going to say, take that wall out and Paul will have a nice big office, but I forgot what <coughs> SPC. Yeah. I guess the other thing we would maybe recommend is setting up the 185C so that it, it could be used as an office if down the road things change and you need 
need that additional space. Uh, be, you know, it wouldn't be a great office because it you know, has no daylight or anything in it, but we set it up so it has power and data, so you can be ready to do that. And, and uh, so where is the conference room from here? Um, so, yeah, so you can see the corridor there that's right outside. That's the public corridor that extends all the way down to Ticketing Hall. So the space that's immediately across is TSA's uh, admin space, and the conference room is just the next room down. So yeah. this yeah. area over here would be the conference room? Well, it's right. just past there. Northwest, northeast. Just kind of to the right off the page, yeah. Yeah, yep. there, right there. And, and is the conference room uh, closed in, or does it have glass It, it has a, a translucent glass wall, so similar to the glass wall that's between the ticketing hall and the TSA screening area would have that same kind of treatment. I probably that's a greater hat too you can No, oh, they they put a they put a uh, I think like a mylar uh, picture. Oh that's a, they've got a picture of yeah. a golf course or something on there. I don't know what it is. I guess is Yeah we toured that part, didn't we? <clears throat> yeah I remember. Yeah well and so uh, you know it doesn't have to have the translucent film on there. It could be just clear glass. Um, I don't know what what do folks think about having just open glass so people can see into the conference room versus having it kind of opaque. We're public. I don't know. I know we want to honor Bemidji, the kind of that natural resource board that she takes. That's care one of. Well, that that's a, all glass. Too. That's well, is that their county board room? County board you know, room. It's, just, it's all glass. It's all glass. Yeah. Let's go with glass. Okay. We were paranoid. We could always hang a paper bag or something. <laughs> and and, uh, and I guess if you did have to uh, have some private discussion, you could go over to the conference room, and take the conference room over to it. And that's what we do now too. There's a meeting. Several folks join the other conference room. Okay. All right. Sounds like we're just got to decide on on chairs and table. Or to come there. Further questions? Further on the uh, phase two construction? I think that's everything for phase two. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. So let's say again. Uh, get some new ramp lighting. Uh, yes. They had to kind of get modified. Is that working fine? Mm -hmm. Yep. We're, we're uh, on those ones. Okay. Yeah. We're, it's modified. We just need it's to modified. We, we, just, we just need the final adjustment. Okay. We, we've got it. Do you think for the concern? Uh, yeah, went through a little growing pain there of getting the right mounts uh, to to mount to the existing poles. We're at 100 percent there now. We've got and looks to me like we have enough uh, lumens of enough uh, candle power, and um, we just need the final adjustment. And, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I think contractually, um, we can hold it to doing it at night so we can. Yeah, Kenny will come in. Yeah, yeah, already yeah. Definitely. Good. Yeah. He'll be back next do. week. So, which is close to five o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five below. Yeah. 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 Like Twenty minutes yeah. away. Yeah. But yeah, so it uh, uh, we're ready. Yeah. So and and uh, and you can you can you do your level best to dress it during the day, but at night it's always a different picture. So any little little tweaking, but to the to the credit of uh, of Kenny and and, uh, and the pictures that they that they responded. I was a bit concerned at first because when they were first mounted, frankly, they were they weren't sure what to say mounted. They were uh, just they were kind of they were they kind of went with 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 they modified the mounts that were at hand and, and uh, that ended up uh, mounting them in a vertical plane. They're designed to be in a horizontal plane, so of course the light cast is totally different. So we uh, we're there now, so. and we'll readjust again once we get phase two complete and, and the additional lights on the new phase two. Shadows. Further uh, questions on um, phase two of the terminal, and and so concrete will probably be complete in the next two weeks. Yeah, by the end of next week, they're hoping to have all the curb sidewalks, everything done. Would a uh, December tour uh, of the uh, after the meeting, if we yeah. have folks want to come out there and have a tour? Yep, I think I may. That would be, I think we're looking at the 19th. 19th, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, a 
when we have our first meeting on there. That's yeah. April or May, probably. Yeah, so that's uh, really to kind of wrap up the phase two discussion. Then uh, we'll, we'll continue on getting things uh, done. We're pushing hard, yes, on the exterior to get that patched back with the concrete and things. So it, it's a uh, code compliant, aggressive, you know, building. Uh, knowing that we're still aiming to be turning things over before spring, so we need to get that outside patch back done. Uh, we had initially had a, if you recall, at the end of the year, goal of being substantially complete. Uh, we, we started a month later, so we pushed that substantial completion to the end of January. We have had you know, some, some weather and some uh, concrete plant and some other issues that are probably taxing that a little bit. But I did put a 60-day time frame from substantial to reach final. So I still want to, you know, we're pushing hard to look at that March 31 final completion. Substantially, uh, Rick, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're thinking like I am. That's definitely going to be pushing into February. So let's kind of keep that earmarked for now, but that is still our goal. So roughly that first week of April, we should be occupying, getting people moved back in and up and running. Where are we at with the windows that wait for the outside concrete to be done before they go in? They brought, yeah, they brought some frames up this week, but they brought only the one where they were pouring concrete. So they couldn't work together there. So I thought they were coming back with the rest of the frames, but I don't know if they are building those ones now. He has all the material, just not the glass. Yeah, and that's fine. We, we know the glass can be uh, you know, a six week, whatever, lead time. And we don't need the glass right away. We just need the frame so we can complete drywall finishing and returns and things back to them. And, yeah, the timing of who goes first right. is where they're at. But they are building the frames and everything. They're shopping at Grand Rapids and right now we'll be getting them in. So, um, Back to phase one, punch list warranty things. Uh, we, we have a, uh, an, an ongoing boiler issue that uh, we've been looking into. It it's, was hard to pinpoint. It doesn't uh, seem to just happen automatically. It's, although lately it seems to be more consistently tripping out. Um, it's the neighbor's tanner, right? And, yeah. Right? <laughs> so the boiler uh, representative, RM Cotton, came up and uh, did some parts and pieces replacement about a week ago. Uh, igniter and a valve. They're still digging into some other issues. There might be some flue gas that might be back wrapping back in the combustion chamber. They're not sure yet. They're researching that and will get us a report of that finding recommendation of what they you know, would do to, to fix it. Now, that being said, Rick tells me that uh, when they were up a week ago, it, it tripped out not too far after. However, you reset it. I reset it on Monday, and it's still running. And it's still running. So, fingers crossed, maybe we're making some progress. As I understand, they're, they're identical boilers. Yeah. They are. And the one has been working just fine. Yeah, correct. That's what's kind of slow and confused on, you know, how do, the do power power out. out. No, they, not, I don't think it's power. They, they, they use the same? They, separate. They're separate? Yeah, they're piped the same, but they're separate. Mm -hmm. the way, right? Yeah, they're, they're each other. You know, five so feet apart. Why one is acting up and the other is not, we're not quite sure. Uh, the, the one that's acting up certainly it's is the backup boiler. It's not your primary boiler. Maybe so a bird nest in the pipe there for the winter. And, and obviously the concern is, is that we're running basically on one or two for now. Yeah, two or eight. I don't have confidence in the second one. So <laughs> obviously if the first one goes down, we're, is it I'm cold? not sure why you heat the building. Right. I don't know what right. to do, frankly. Right. I have no idea. Okay. Are, we look, are, are we looking at a timeline on the warranty there? Um, yes and no. The warranty itself is under one year, which you know was flagged and identified, and they've been digging into it. There are further warranties on parts and pieces, however, that go beyond that one year. I don't know if it's a five-year parts um, warranty, but they are accepting certainly the fact that it's 
frankly never worked correctly to the extent that it should from the get go. Yes, so we don't have that report yet, but uh, I expect that in the next couple of days after they determine what the next course of action wants to be to get that final correction done. I don't know, maybe you fixed it though. Yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> I've reset it before and it's never lasted very well. Well, you said let it's fixed, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I've got more faith, right now. I've got more faith in him and Amy. Yeah, that's right. right. I, I, I haven't had hot water for seven days in my house, so. Brian, is it's that the same issue? That's tough. Is that yeah. the same That's the problem. I'm sorry. That's not copying. He's <laughs> <It's not copying. laughs> doing a cold shower. What is that? Okay. No, I mean, those. Uh, you get those ghosts in there, you just can't find them. No. It's just crazy. So they're uh, they're certainly, you know, digging into it. They're not walking away from anything that we're aware of. They just need to do some of their engineering research and try to understand why that blue gas is, is acting up. Are they out of Minneapolis? Yes. Uh, Cotton, I believe, is out of yeah. Minneapolis. Yeah, Brooklyn part of this. They flew up um, on an airplane, I think, last time to come visit the site with the technician. All right. Other than that, uh, Thor's got to pull the bed in there. Mm -hmm. Sleeping. How is the uh, the it's sun cool. the sunscreen uh, issue? So it hasn't been sunny the days I've been in there to try to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've seen, no, we haven't seen the sun. Yeah. October. So yeah, we haven't been able to really right. pinpoint the, where it should go or. How about the how about the, the scanner for for Holly ticket scanner? That's yeah. So we've got two two different sun glare issues. One is at the uh, morning pass, you know, scanning unit on those two, three window panes that are immediately adjacent to that, uh, to that desk, that station. Uh, Destin and the yeah, group have said, hey, let's, let's put a window, commercial grade window blind roller shade in that area to match the same type of window shades that are already scheduled for phase two. Process of getting that ordered to be installed and pay lead time. It could be another month out. We're trying to stay with Mecco Shade instead of uh, an alternate brand Draper, but they're very similar products. So once we tease that out, we've got the shade fabric figured out, and I would hope within 30 to 45 days we'll have that taken care of. TSA, a little bit different story. We, I think, agreed we. We don't necessarily want to see a window blind or roller shade at that separating glass wall from the you know, screening area to the gate lounge. As the sun gets low this time of year and comes through the outside uh, windows and comes through that center wall, the monitor screens that the TSA folks are trying to watch, you know, the scanning equipment, the sun's kind of hitting their eyes. Uh, we talked about a window film that we put on I don't know, there's two or three of those panes also. Uh, we do some more research. We're talking with the film folks that did phase one or scheduled to do phase two. They're out of um, an, an opaque film in, in what their information is, is not intended to take care of glare. That's more of a visual thing. It may help, but it may not take care of it still be bright, as you can imagine, the sun's coming right through that. So I think that's why we want to Rick to uh, wait for a sunny day, do a test uh, kind of the outside, you know, corral area where that film is already present and just see how bright that might be if that does seem to help. We'll certainly do that. But it's about a $2,000 film application, so we want to get it right now. It's just, you know, maybe spend $2,000, that's still not an issue. Good. So, to be continued, I, I don't have a, an easy answer today, but we'll get some better uh, options and it, it may come back to a shade program. That is the solid uh, answer. Because we're only looking at what, three, four months at the most? Yeah. 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 And with that, TSA, I went and talked to them yesterday. They're getting all new equipment and reconfiguring that room. That's so I don't know. That may take care of the problem. Right. That's what yesterday's meeting. Today. Yeah. Y yeah. Agreeably, you're dealing with an operational issue right now. You know, the building is designed to bring in lots of natural light. Yep. Operationally, that natural light is affecting their ability to view the screens. 
it's not just putting a, a screen protector on the computer because then that's not the issue. It's sun in your eyes, not being able to see the monitors. But if, yeah, they and, change and that. And they're talking pretty pretty much a, a, a good amount of change. In that change that's what it's always like, yeah. Right. yeah. So that may change this whole... It might change the whole layout where you won't have that issue. It may. Yeah. So what, wasn't that new equipment in the mm -hmm. open yeah. a year ago? Yeah. Brand new. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. The only thing that's not getting new is the the round thing. The body scanner. Okay. That's that's they're gonna reuse that, but they might have to reconfigure the whole room, the layout of it. Yeah, because that uh, struggles just to get in the door. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, what prompted that? I have no idea. TSA federal government. Yeah. New standards, he said. New standards. Mm -hmm. Just like the FA one thirty nine inspector. New standards. Gotta change. Maybe Cliff's visit here or something. You decided to. No, I, I think it's a national. I think it's a national directive. Okay. So beyond that, um, we also had a sound issue through the speakers for Holly and crew trying to announce the flights. Um, we have did a test actually. There's a sound bar. Um, I don't like maybe at home if you buy a sound bar. That's better than the TV speaker itself. There's a sound bar already on the TV stand in the middle of the gate lounge. Um, Justin Shipley wired the microphone to that as a test. Works fine. Holly likes it. Uh, that took the sound away from the TVs, however. So uh, he's gonna he's gonna connect that back up. He's got two new sound bars that he went I think over the weekend and picked up, and he's installing them today. So that uh, by the end of the day today should be back in order, and let's hope everybody's happy. I, I think the true test might be when there's you know 75 people inside and it's a little noisy to make sure it's got the sound level loud enough that everybody's still different. Do the ones go on that center? Yeah. Yeah, the TV stand. Yeah, the TV stand. Yeah, I'll that right there on sure one, you know, facing each direction. And makes it sound is great. Yeah, sound. Always happy. Picked up a couple of bows someplace or what? Yeah, probably. I'm not the sure nerds. what they were. Probably not bows. Yeah. Yeah. Black Friday, do Black Friday, but actually, they, they were the flurry. I looked at the bowls. Oh, my God. How do you know the bowls? The $75 option instead of the 150 We're still bowled up. Are you? That sounds terrible. They're not hard to hook up or anything like that. Yeah. It's just making sure that uh, it's connected. They're basically glued to it. I don't want to see that video. Yeah. Very good. So that should be resolved. Um, Rick did a test on the outside signage that uh, we're looking to try to get refinished under warranty through signation. Our concern was could he actually pull them out of the wood and not damage the wood? A couple that yeah. you tried. A couple okay. that were easy. So that uh, gets us to that next step then. We'll, we'll take that off, we'll package it up, we'll ship it back to signation, they'll refinish it, send back, we'll put it back on. So that'll be a process. Um, advertising, digital advertising uh, work is not yet complete. There's some programming things Justin Chipley is trying to work through with it. It's the type of uh, monitors, I believe, themselves, players, they call them. Uh, I think Marco had purchased some things under contract with you through hands of electric as part of phase one that, as far as I understand, weren't able to be used. Um, but we want to try to use them now for this digital application since you've already paid for them. And that coordination effort is ongoing with uh, Nate, electrical engineer, and Marco, so that Justin can get that taken care of. So we're, we're getting close. Uh, unfortunately, right now, Nate has a uh, family personal issue going on for the last couple of days, so hopefully he'll free up in a few days and get back on task with that to get it solved. I think that's it. That's that's our update. Ongoing cleanup items. There's some punch list things uh, ongoing that Rick's whittling the list down on from the original phase one construction, some door sweeps and threshold replacements and things that have to be done, uh, some tile grout, but otherwise that list is getting getting pretty thin. 
Commissioner McBride. <coughs> Steve, that issue we had though tied with the, the blacktop, that never did get resolved, did it not? It did not. It did not. So I've got a letter um, drafted that I'll I'll get to uh, Bowman to Bowman for you. I'll probably have you sign that. I mean, I can sign it for you as well as your you know construction manager representative. Um, as we previously talked, at this point, nothing's going to happen now with the spring. Right. Uh, we'll just recommend not paying them the remaining funds that are being held of retention. We'll use those dollars to hire somebody else next year and come seal coat that area. Do we have any two minutes work in the end of phase two? <laughs> not scheduled. So we were trying to be very careful on the sidewalk area that's immediately outside of the new addition. Uh, Rick kept that in place as long as he could. Removed it at the end to try to get that cement board now, but make that just a clean line right up to the existing asphalt that's there. So if that is still the plan and works out, we should have no asphalt to right. up here or replace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so yeah. Operationally, the jet bridge seems to be working fine. No issues lately. Okay. Yeah. The rest of operations, from your perspective, could be the uh, Rick mentioned uh, you, you looked on top of the jet bridge with the warm up over the weekend, Saturday maybe, and some rain. There's nothing on top of it right now to even do a test to see if some snow melt, you know, raised up for the X737 would cause any issues. Holly said it didn't on the last some country. When they came in, there yeah. a little bit of snow on yeah. top. Yeah, it worked, yeah, worked fine. So we're probably coming up here soon. Yeah, I think we always said, hey, let's hold off until about now to see, you know, if that first plate caused any issues. It sounds like it did not. Uh, certainly, a bridge would like to be paid in full. Uh, I would think here coming up in December, that should, that should be done. We should pay it. Yeah, you'll have some snow by then, probably. So you will yeah. process that for the December meeting? We will. Okay. Yeah, which frankly would be, I'll have to look at that right now, that'd be November's payout coming to you for December. Um, if we can get it in right now, we've got a few days yet, I think we can. Okay. Yes. We held back half? 50% uh, of the retained right. dollars. Right. Right. So it might be another ten to 13000 remaining to pay. <coughs> uh, go ahead. Was there ever a determination of what was wrong with the operational factors in that chapter? Uh, several. You know, each incident might have been specific to itself, and I think there was a, a lot of uh, uh, learning curve, maybe, and from them and operationally, how to run it effectively so that it wasn't damaging things and, you know, stop, limit things that uh, I think at one point we built a vertical drive uh, shaft plate that had to get replaced so that's been taken care of. I know it's, oh, it's used every day I think has not been an issue since they were up to some additional help and training. It was operationally is you can't run the thing wide open and then just stop it. Right. You have to have two Easy. fingers to run with high speed. You can't just take both fingers off. You gotta when you go from high speed let it come back to low speed. For you. So what it was doing was just jerking and racking. Yeah. Pretty substantial design flaw, though, right? Yeah. They, I mean, obviously, they should have known that. Right? Yeah. Should you run it on yeah. um, low all the time? Does that hurt it to, to run low? Yeah, it just takes twice as long to sure. get from point A to point B. So, so the only, if I could, Mr. Chair, the only real outstanding issue then is, is it, will it leak? So long. Right. We That's, should know that by the should, We should know, I would think, fairly soon. We had to get some snow. Yeah. So. Oh, we'll, we'll know. Well, if we get, if we get a little bit of snow today and it's supposed to warm up, <laughs> we'll know. We, we, yeah. you know, okay. if, if we get a warm up, we should go over there and, and raise it up. Raise it up. Yeah, I think we just force the test and see how it does. Right. Um, maybe just as a reminder for us all, they certainly were up. They've been fairly responsive. They, uh, they did add the heat tape apparatus on top of the rotunda area uh, to help keep things melted so it's not building up in that immediate area. Um, and, and really, they, they did a water test. We 
it was summer, but you know they claim they put 1,500 gallons of water on top of that rug and raised it, sent it towards the rotunda, and it was fine. Uh, so I'll be asking, <coughs> what does it do in the winter months? Yeah. And our roof on the main building isn't. That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Thor Thor will be my architect on the next. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget him saying that's not going to work. <laughs> Everything uh, so far is good. Um, the only other item I can think of might be your Vega channeling system. Uh, we certainly did get the uh, out covers here and installed on those exposed shaft ends. Uh, we took a look at the gap that is kind of between the main belt behind the ticket counter, close to the fire door, around the corner. Uh, there, there was a gap there that um, there's, there's really not a good way to reduce that gap, and it, I think it occurred once on a small, soft bag or a package that got stuck, and that's what hooked up the fire door that had to get fixed. Uh, I, I think the discussion we had with Holly is if you have that type of a small, soft bag, maybe put it in a bin and let it go around the corner that way, and that should solve the issue. Um, there's always the custom engineering effort we could go through and try to come up with a little bit of an extension plate underneath that that would reduce that gap. Uh, but that's against the cost that you would incur, I think right now operationally, if you could get through it just by watching for those types of things and using a bin. Good. Okay. Not heard back from them. They they still owe uh, the commission a follow up visit, uh, part of their contract, part of their warranty to come do a final tweak and adjustment of the system. Uh, not heard back when they'll get that technician up here. They're trying to get them scheduled in the next 30 days, roughly. Good. That's all I've got on. Great. Construction. Sounds updates. good. Born concrete. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's not going to be a good day to fly tomorrow in the Twin Cities area. Flying a little, uh, little sloppiness coming up. When I, when I called you last night, or last night, the reason why I was calling was there was a flight plan for you last night. For last night or what? Were you planning on last night originally? I, I figured that out this morning when I tried to pick up my That's flight. all right. I was, I was going like, I think he missed a message, but, uh, but we got it. You know? Hey, as long as you digress, was that a Michigan oh. State plan there yesterday? Yeah. The Big M? Yeah, that's actually, it used to be, and now it's on a, it's on a, it's uh that's actually uh Wagner's plan. A couple more more stolen down on 135 to the They, they, uh, they oh. have with a company, on a, on a lease company that, that runs their tax yes. with it, and they have returned yeah, from, from so I held some second like that. Camp, I, so I, was, uh, I just figured with the color scheme and the original, yeah, that's a fact. Michigan. Yes, it was. was. Like that year we got the Halloween <laughs> snowstorm. Never was. Oh, I'm fine. Thanks, Alpha. All right. All right. Ready? 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 The simulator we've passed out kind of matches the agenda items, and uh, hopefully this just provides uh, just a little context uh, to what we're talking about. Hopefully it's uh, beneficial for you. Um, we, we break it up in our phases, uh, in the, the items that are kind of tagged with those. Uh, so the first one is uh, phase one. Um, again, that's the northernmost thousand feet. Um, the schedule is the same as it was last month. We don't have an update there. Uh, KGM hasn't provided their schedule. <coughs> so we're waiting to get a little more clarity from them start to get their submittals in. So I'm starting to think they'll think about it um, and, and get us hopefully a little more uh, idea of what they plan for next year. Um, for phase one, the one issue that we've been working through has been the Sky West coordination items. Um, it's kind of been coming up uh, off and on throughout the fall. Um, we recently had a meeting with the FAA to discuss um, um, 
if we can accommodate SkyWest, and, and maybe I'll back up just one step to, to say what the issue is. Um, I would say maybe even a year ago at this time, we had a call with SkyWest. They indicated that 5,400 feet was their magic number. Um, that's kind of where our project phasing was developed from. Um, since then, um, they, they've kind of revised their numbers, and, and now they say that during a wet condition, um, they re would require 5,800 feet in order to not have any sort of uh, weight restriction or load restriction for their, their pastures. So we've been working with uh, SkyWest and the FAA and the project team here to, to kind of look at different alternatives that we could do. Um, I think we have two alternatives. Um, we're, we eliminated one of them just because it's not quite feasible with uh, the runway configuration, the way it's laid out. Um, the other one uh, is uh, an opportunity to, um, let's see if I can say this without confusing everybody, but you can move the landing threshold back 400 feet if you have temporary visual guidance. Um, so that would require changes to our plans. Um, it would require the contractor to have a change order. Um, the FAA seems supportive of that change um, in a funding aspect. Um, however, that change uh, would only allow them 5,800 feet when you're landing runway 13. Um, predominantly in the summertime, it's a runway 31. Um, 82%. Yeah, 82% of the time, um, and that's year round. I would say in the summer it's probably even higher um, that you would land runway 31. So, so the balance that you know we have to take the sky west and say is, you know, we could potentially give you 5,800 feet for runway 13 for 18% of the time, and the other time, I mean, you most likely won't land with a tailwind. We landed actually with a tailwind today, and it really affects your landing distance probably more so than a wet runway would. Um, and so those combinations, and the, and the runway would be wet if you're landing runway um, <coughs> 3-1 anyway, so you'd have the tailwind plus the wet runway, uh, which wouldn't be ideal for, for SkyWest. So we're looking at an 18% opportunity um, for, for SkyWest uh, with considerable changes to the, the phasing and um, co co uh, coordination with the contractor. So, um, I, you know, I, I guess this is more background information. Um, I think our, our next conversation is with SkyWest uh, to work through these items. Uh, the the uh, requires a temporary PAPI that is installation? Correct. That is correct, yep. And, and uh, FAA is considering that? They would support it because the PAPI would um, help all the aircraft that would be using the, the uh, shortened runway um, with a display threshold. So they would consider it as eligible. Um, I think the question then is, is it a worthwhile endeavor you know, for that <coughs> one scenario that would have helped SkyWest? So. And that has to be tested before it can be uh, Yeah, I think, you know, the FAA indi yeah, they indicated they would, you know, they're open to considering the funding. I think there's still maybe challenges in the scheduling of you know those flight checks and is that still feasible I think kind of this late in the game um, I don't think we have a certain answer from FA on kind of the feasibility of the scheduling of, of that but. what was what was your feelings on the FA's position at, at that meeting at our last conference probably had <clears throat> I think they were they were still kind of holding their breath and really not uh, saying for sure what they were going to do but um, I guess it seems to me that uh, if we have a, red, a wet runway and they're coming up from the Twin Cities and, and are going to have to land on that, they're going to probably displace about 10 people off the plane. Yeah. That's it, my understanding of it. That's what Sky West is saying. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. That would happen in the worst case scenario, correct? I mean, we're, so you're talking 18% year round. You're probably, if it's 82 year round, are you guessing 90% of the time this summer? I mean, you know, it's a three one, so that changes that number. So, let, but let's go with the hard data of 365 days at 82%. You, you have to have the to to affect the 18%. You have to have a perfect scenario yeah. of the tailwind of a wet runway of an aircraft that's at 100% capacity in that given day, that given time, to affect them. 
So I, I and, and that and that's a difficult, very difficult number to come up with. Well, and I think you had a weather. I'm not sure what what you call the. I have the, uh, I have the team thing. I forgot. Yeah. Oops. Um, <laughs> I, I had it. I left it on my desk when I left. Yeah, I kind of showed the, the it wind it was, it was dispersion. Really cool to it. Which direction the wind comes There it is. Ding dong. Yeah, Wonderful. Keeps, keeps and it. Yeah. Yep. If I understood that, uh, June was the worst month. If the construction was going on in June, if it was going on in July or in August, it gave a lesser chance that we would have a wet for runway. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And then the other thing, if you're looking at the data to consider, is that it's less likely to have a full flight in June than yes. it is in July and August. So you're kind of trading those risk factors. Yes. If you look at our uh, enplanements uh, mm -hmm. of the three months, June, July, and August, you, you might have, a, well, 300 less people. So what's that, 10 people a day? Could have less, so you might have five. You might have a 45 right. passenger plane versus a 50 passenger. The main concern then is what runway more than wind direction, per se, right? Yes. Because yep. this old fishing guide in June, uh, to me, the wind is predominantly southeast. I mean, because that's where. Yeah. So I mean, through the month of June, the southeast wind is. I bet you, 80 percent of the time. So. So that would, I mean, that would, so then you'd be landing 13, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we could look into the, the monthly wind data to, to see, you know, kind of break it up per month. <coughs> you know, I think from SkyWest perspective that uh, we would be able to have a phone call just to kind of work through this and, and see how they're, um, you know, yeah. how it would just be affected on their scheduling overall. Is it, is it a, a load factor on the day of the flight or are they just going to take seats off while they schedule from June to And, I, and again, I can't reiterate enough to just to be sure that, that, that our team is protected. That so 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 the folks know that definitely we the whole group was definitely under the understanding that Sky West was okay with our original workers. They even said that. And and then they then we had the uh, safety risk management meeting, and Absolutely. it really didn't come out at that point either. It's kind of been since then that they've thrown up this flag now. Correct. On the other hand, um, there's no compromise on safety. I'm not going right. you know, I think we need to do everything we can. We're, we're fortunate to be able to have service. I agree. And so let's do whatever we can to try to make that happen. If that means some temporary pappies, uh, let's, let's go down that road. I'm not. I'm not willing to put safety on a question mark. Well, I think our next call then is with Sky West. Um, I was joking that I'm, I'm giving up my engineering license to become a professional media attender. I have quite a few meetings for you today. You're getting pretty good at it, though. <laughs> yeah. um, so Sky West indicated that they are available on uh, Monday, December third. 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Um, so if that works uh, for, for anybody that wants to participate in that call, um, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Monday, December 3rd. And that was one of those options you gave it was. a few days ago, right? Yep, yep. Okay. One of, I sent those same days to Sky West, and they, they gave the same ones. Good for Sky, Sky West and Delta. Yeah. So. Cool. I think primarily, then Thor and I did yeah. have these calls. And you're okay with that, that's fine. If you want to join in, certainly welcome to get you the information to call. So, Bob, that, that does work for you? Yep, I'll, I'll send out that invite uh, here sure. this afternoon. We'll get that scheduled up to six. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good conversation with them just to share what we're going to be to phase three, right? Any other questions on phase one or SkyWest? Moving on, uh, phase two, uh, the, the issue that we're working with, uh, obviously there's quite a few issues with you know reconstructing the taxiway and uh, preparing for a temporary runway. Um, that design is, is going forward. Um, we don't really have uh, much in the way of uh, 
information to report, uh, although we're just working on it in earnest as we work through. Um, the big item that we want to discuss is the weather balloon launch facility relocation. Uh, this was a topic of our discussion at the last FAA meeting that we had uh, just a week or two ago. Um, if you remember, I'm going to pass this figure out. Uh, we talked about different uh, site locations for the relocated weather facility. And so we had the three alternatives, and uh, the direction from the previous commission meeting was that, that site three across the road is, uh, is probably the preferred site. Uh, we met with the FAA, they also agree they think that's the preferred site to, to uh, uh, impact future developments and any sort of ramp expansion or building expansion, uh, kind of gives your, you the most options. So option three is kind of what we've been looking for um, as we go through that. Um, and maybe I'll pass it over to Tracy if, if you're willing, just some of the things we discussed about uh, on how we would make that happen. <coughs> Sure, so in the memo we have a few of the kind of the, the big high level steps that would need to be considered if we move forward with option three. Um, so the first one would be updating the airport layout plan. We would just do kind of a quick update, um, show those parcels um, to be identified as future property acquisition. You know, to be eligible for FAA funding, a project has to be on your airport layout plan, so we would update that. Um, the FAA indicated that if we just do, you know, a one or two page memo to go with um, including the, the documentation as to why that site was chosen and why it needs to be shown as future property, they would kind of accept that, put it in their file, and that would be kind of the first step um, in moving forward with the FAA process uh, to pursue uh, site three. The next thing would be, um, so the FAA, anytime you spend federal money, you have an environmental review. Um, you know, a lot of smaller projects, reconstruction projects, um, you can do a categorical exclusion, which is just kind of a checklist document. So that's typically um, something that, that we work through on most of all of your projects. Um, but when a project has um, more impacts, um, depending on the impact category, there's certain thresholds that tip the environmental review into a full environmental assessment. And for property acquisition, that threshold, that tipping point is three acres. So if we purchase over three acres of property um, using federal funds or for a federal purpose, even if you use local money, but you're moving it because of a federal project, there's a tie there. Um, so you're required to do an environmental assessment. Um, likely we will be buying over three acres here. Um, you know, there is potential opportunity to, you could carve out, you know, only a two acre area and minimize what you need to acquire. That may not, you know, bode well for negotiations with the landowner. You know, it, it might not be the best option, but you could potentially consider that also. Um, so seeing that we're anticipating will be over three acres, that environmental assessment is triggered, um, that'd be funded by the FAA. Um, it would be a, a simpler one. It's not, you know, you can do big complex EAs, you know, like for your runway extension or other things. This would be a, a simpler environmental assessment process. Um, there would be some other smaller studies that we would have to do as part of it. We wouldn't, we don't think we would have to do actual wetland delineations, but we would document uh, wetlands using aerial imagery um, from different seasons of the year. Um, there would have to be some kind of hazardous um, materials um, assessment. Um, anytime you buy land with federal money, you have to do a phase one site assessment to, to determine if there's any likelihood for contaminants on the site. Um, kind of just protecting you know, the airport authority or the airport commission when you're buying, buying property. Um, and we don't believe there would be any need to do any um, architectural or cultural resources review. Um, if it were an older property with say, you know, an 80 year old home, we would maybe have to do an architectural history um, survey to confirm that it's not a you know, potentially historic resource, but we don't believe we'll have that um, hoop to go through. Um, so the, the EA process is add some time. Um, so we, we do think, you know, if we get to the point, um, you know, get to the meet, next meeting here in a minute, but we do have a meeting coming up with the FAA on December 7th. So I think if we get through that meeting, we're still kind of on this track for site three in the EA. The EA is something you should really initiate in the next one to two months so that you can meet those timeline steps um, to get through that process and then acquire the land and move the, the balloon facility. Um, so the EA process is, you know, if you started December, January, probably at least through July, 
Um, there's the preparation time um, to prepare it. That has to go out, the, once you prepare the EA, it goes out for a 30-day public comment. You collect your public comments, make revisions, it goes out again for another 30 days. So there, it is a lengthier process. Um, and then after the EA is done, you know, kind of guessing July time frame, um, then you could initiate the acquisition process. Um, so that there's a formal federal process that has to be followed, um, including you know notifications, um, meetings, interviews, notifying them of kind of their rights as the landowner, um, the appraisal process, a review appraisal process, and then negotiating those offers back and forth. Um, since it is a federally funded project, we have to follow the Uniform Relocation Act, which not only pays the property owner, you know, they obviously get paid for their property, but their relocation costs are covered as well. Um, so that all, all is, is part of that overall process. So generally we'd see like a six to eight month time frame for this whole process when you're using the federal relocation process um, to get through those initial contact meetings, their notification periods, the appraisals, the offers, the negotiations, all of that. Um, so we typically work with ProSource as a firm that does um, property acquisitions, relocations. Um, we've worked with them on quite a bit of airport projects. Um, I know SEH works with them on other right-of-way type projects as well. Um, so we'd recommend working with them to kind of facilitate that entire process. They facilitate um, the, the coordination and negotiations with the landowner, the meetings, the appraisals, the entire process. Um, and another good thing is, is that um, Jason Alt is the individual that we work with. Um, he's very, very familiar with the FAA process and can kind of what he'll do is he's able to kind of look out for the commission to make sure that through that negotiation process and, and the communication process that you know all of the federal process is being followed as far as the Uniform Relocation Act, um, but that also FA eligibility is kind of being considered as well. He's very familiar with that. So as you get into negotiations, you know he's, he knows what the FA is able to pay for, not pay for, and make sure that that's you know on the table as part of the process as well. Um, so kind of help um, keep the commission's interests in mind um, through that process. Any questions on? Well, I think I think as a piece of this, uh, Tori, you you have had discussions, preliminary discussions with the family. They they want to move some, yeah. or all of the buildings. I guess I'm not I'm not certain what the term is there. Yeah, my my understanding is is that. Quote unquote, the homes, the home, the houses, correct. I want to move to the new location. And that would be something. So, we were talking with um, Jason at ProSource, and he said typically how this would be handled is you know, you'd give the landowner money for the, the land and the property, the structures. Um, they would then purchase the structures back from the commission or the city county at um, a salvage value that would you would have the appraiser determine that value. Um, and so, like, all of that just kind of gets sorted out through that those negotiation processes, but that moving the, those homes or any of the structures is definitely um, something that's possible. Um, but we do want to make sure we're working that into the timeline. Um, for you know, if you think July we're done with the EA, and then it's a six to eight month acquisition process by the end of winter, we would then need to clear the site right away at the beginning of 2020. Um, May, June, work on moving structures, clearing the site, and then July, August, September is when that balloon facility would have to move. In 2020? In 2020, yeah. <clears throat> and and the, I guess the question I have is on the, um, the property owner purchasing other property to, to move, is that kind of a thing covered too? I mean, if they purchase another piece of property, um, does that come under the relocation? No, like the relocation is like the the actual paying them for moving all of their personal property. Um, there is some, so they get paid for the value of their property. Um, sometimes in a case where, um, say there's not a suitable similar site, um, sometimes there's an additional payment, I believe, like if there isn't, It has to do with like the market availability of, of sites. So I don't think, I mean, they don't get additional money to buy something different. I mean, they get the value of what they own today. Um, but sometimes if there's not something available in the market, you have to make sure that they are able to find housing 
um, in something similar. So in that case, sometimes there is something above and beyond that's offered, but I don't know if that would apply in this case. And are you they're looking to move south uh, with this? Yes, I, I, I believe he has a, a property on Highway 53. Uh, would, be, would be near some of the bar property. So you're dealing with one family member? That is correct. It looks like that's going to be the case going forward. There's not going to be... That is correct. Uh, this, the option with the FAA you're saying what was generally three acres, so that would probably only include this well, portion. I mean, we would not be able to say that. The three acre is what triggers the EA. Um, okay. The FA will support purchasing, you know, whatever you need to purchase. Okay. It's not that their funding only goes up to oh, that. So just the three acres triggers the EA. Right. Okay. Yep. And we, you know, likely are going to have to buy more than three acres to, you know, possibly fit our own needs, but also mm -hmm. make sure that the landowner is whole. And, you know, the, yeah. the property lines, to clarify, that are on here are from the county GIS, so the accuracy is not perfect. Um, it does appear that some of the parcel lines go through structures that may or may not be the case when they actually go out and survey the property boundaries. Um, but obviously, you know, if a, a person has a garage on one parcel and a home on the other and you're buying their home, you still need to comp you mean, you're yeah. splitting up their property as kind of an, in a way an uneconomical remnant. You're changing the value of their other parcel. So there's really, in this case, especially um, the two, the 2.5 and the 4.6, and actually on the little 0.3 acres to the north, it would be really difficult to split those up. Yep. I wanted to add maybe just two, two things. Um, one, just to kind of brace it for the administrative requirements that, that come along with this. It's, uh, you know, it's a federal process, the Uniform Act. You know, we listed a few of those items, um, but it's, you know, you know, when you're talking about the value of the land, you're like, well, how much, well, how could it cost us much administratively to, you know, do these appraisals and do the negotiations and things? And sure, you'll have a, just want to brace yourself for that you'll one. Have, yeah, you'll, have, you'll have a quarter of the value of the land tied up in the, in, 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 right, yeah. literally in, in, in the paperwork and yeah. facilitating the, the, the rights. And at, at another airport, you know, it's a very small acreage that we're, we're attempting to acquire. It's like maybe 0.2 acres or something like that. The administrative costs will exceed the amount of what the actual value of the land is. So I did just, uh, it, it's a federal process and you're getting the federal money, so it's just uh, part of the deal. So I just and and uh, with regard to ProSource, uh, do you subcontract to them or do, does the airport have a direct uh, contract with them? I think you could do it either way. Um, you know, I think there might be some pieces that SEH would help with when we uh, went out for your five year selection ProSource, ProSource as part of our team. Um, so I, I think that's how we would uh, approach it unless you wanted to see it differently. Nope. Because I think there's some surveying elements, you know, that SEH would provide support with. Right, and I think um, in talking to Jason, I know their preference is to sub to an airport engineer just since we're familiar with that grant processing um, on some of that. So. Yes. One, uh, one other item I wanted to clarify too is you can see the larger parcel, the 10.7 acres. Uh, one thing, and if Dora Bob maybe can uh, add to this, the FA was a little hesitant on acquiring that because it doesn't have a need for the project. Um, but you can also look from the negotiation process that the landowner probably doesn't have a desire to keep that, that acreage. So there may be a discussion with the FA on how that's acquired. Uh, Jason was, was sharing some opportunities that, you know, depending on how the transaction works, um, you know, administratively, it might be required to make the, the sale go forward, um, you know, so that it would be included. But yeah, they could also say, you know, like, we don't need that land, we need this land. Um, that's ineligible. So the commission may have to purchase that without a grant in order to make the sale go forward. So keep us posted on that yeah. as, as things develop because that's something, you know, we don't need. Yep. Yeah, I think that's just something to, you know, to consider because it, it, it is kind of, you know, that may affect the wholesale of the transaction. Yeah, sure. I'm sure that the owner wants the whole parcel to be purchased. And if, mm -hmm. if this is all eligible, mm -hmm. but there this would make pretty palatable for, for the commission to start looking at the purchase. That's right. Because it, right. it, 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 it will help in the future. And the grant is money. Grant is, it's, it, our, understand it's obviously a, a financial issue with, but for, for the future for the for the airport there's always been a discussion on on on, on the you know, viability 108 etc is that uh sorry please who, who owns immediately beyond that uh 10 to the south acres uh steve early that's what i thought yeah. okay yeah. 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 
there's also, uh, which reminds me, recently, I don't know when this, how fresh uh, this plat is, but there is a, but he sold, he being Randy, um, sold a very small parcel, right down here, this, right, right in the bottom here where that little clearing is, right down the bottom of the pie, right down there. That's where those trailer, that trailer is? And yes. The junk, yep, right there. And how do you know the junk? Because yeah. we've been looking at it. I understand. Good. How many acres is that little? That's so much. Okay. We would need to get an update from the uh, assessor. And yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a chunk right here that is. Yeah. So, so the the is this the At what point does the FAA give a thumbs up? I mean, I have SK7. I mean, what would we know? Well, you know, I think after the December 7th meeting and we sit back down with them, we can kind of get their final, you know, go ahead to proceed with the process for this site. Um, you know, they can't commit any sort of funding until after that EA is complete. Um, but obviously, you know, they're going to commit to funding the EA, which is, you know, showing their commitment to purchase it. Um, but, it, you know, there is the step of getting through the environmental, and I don't think there's a reason to expect there would be anything that would come out of that that would indicate the FA would change their mind and not support it. I think it's, I think it's best for the airport, uh, for the city and county to, to make that move now. Yeah. Should have vacated one away. It still could do it. It still may happen. Yeah. But I'm just thinking in terms of, um, and thanks for the process, because it is going through all this, it's going to take considerable, but in terms of negotiating with the property owners, you guys, you guys want the 20 acres just north of Schulberg's there? <laughs> <laughs> we can cut you a deal on that one. That's yeah. in the city. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to move now, too? Yeah. <laughs> just a thought. Okay, further. Um, so I think that is all on the, the acquisition process and the balloon relocation, but I think we'll have a much better update in December on kind of more details on the next steps and, and what actions may need to be taken in December or January. Uh, Casey and John, uh, does the county have any restrictions on, on moving or anything that would uh, that could get to be a hurdle to go through as moving. far as, you know, if they needed to move Moving the buildings, buildings and uh, is there is there any do you know of any county ordinances that would come you into know, play? I think it would be the same thing as with the city. They just, just went through. They just need to go through. Sure. Yeah, just need to go through the proper permits and and, and have to, you know when they move on the road, you got to have a permit to do it. Right. No, there's all the and uh, Minnesota Power or whatever power companies that you got to raise lines. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so I guess back to you, if that's the case, and do we need to have the um, kind of the memo of need, desire to the FAA before the December 7th meeting? Um, I think we would probably give them a draft before the, well, not before the December, I'm thinking before your December commission meeting. Okay. Um, you know, I think we'll talk about, and we might have it before the December 7th meeting schedule in my head here, um, but definitely in December um, to the FA, um, okay. and we likely would bring it to you guys, um, to the commission for um, consideration at your December meeting as okay. well, but probably have it in draft the FA before that. Exactly. Have your right. official right. submittal after your December commission meeting. We really do this December 7th meeting as, uh, okay, let's, you know, get buy in from the yep. FA and get everybody on the same page, you know, and then we're going to go off in the direction that uh, the FA supports. Very good. So I think it'll be a good meeting. Okay. All right. Further on uh, phase two. There's nothing more on the uh, land acquisition and uh, EAs. Uh, supplemental appropriation. Um, special thanks to Kyra for getting the, the submittal in. We, uh, we had a last minute hiccup there and we worked through that. So uh, luckily we were able to get the passwords and everything to work. Uh, we got uh, your grant request, supplemental request uh, in on time. Um, and Senators Klobuchar and Smith did write a, a letter of support, which I think, uh, uh, at least as Andy Peake at the FAA indicated, was uh, uh, very beneficial. So special thanks to the received by FAA in Washington and, and the ADO in uh, 
Minneapolis. Yep. Both got copies of that. So yeah, it's, uh, Senator Klobuchar's office took the lead on that and uh, brought in both Senator Smith's office and Congressman Nolan and uh, coordinated to getting all those together. So, and I try to remember the young lady's name. It was different, so I can't remember. Play or something like that. J. J. Play. So I think that was very good to, to have that support, and you know, I guess we'll see where it goes. I think they're expecting maybe December another round of grants will be. Uh, announce and we'll just keep our fingers crossed. We did what we could, so um, they did say it was a political process, if you can imagine that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it might be out of our hands, but uh, you know, I think we did what we could. Nothing political at this day. FAA pre application this is just a very quick one. Uh, MnDOT and the FAA require what uh, kind of the, the first step in your grants for next year, for 2019. Uh, they have a pre application process. Um, that SEH takes care of on your behalf. The one thing we do require is a signature uh, from, uh, from Bob as the chairman just to uh, say that this is what we're planning to do, kind of opens up the grant process. It doesn't commit um, the commission to do any of these projects. Uh, we have, um, you know, it's, it's again it's tied in with the CIP and your budget. Um, but again, the, the phase two runway reconstruction, um, the commercial service apron expansion um, construction. Uh, that's some more of pavement rehab should we uh, need to do crack sealing or any of that work. Um, and then moving into design of uh, phase three, which is your center section of your, of your runway. We also added in the prop property acquisition and the EA, um, should we get federal funding for that. And then some SRE needs as well. So um, again, Mo motion to approve the signature pre-application. Okay, okay, motion by Commissioner McBride to uh, approve the uh, pre-application and the chair's uh, signing of that on behalf of the airport commission. Second. Second by Commissioner Demonen. The chairman goes to prison, not us. Mm. Not, All the right. most, not the most. <laughs> <laughs> Further uh, discussion? All those in favor of the motion to approve the uh, uh, pre-application Phase two, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion is carried. And again, that's just a, uh, you know, kind of a snapshot of what your intents are now. You know, if you remember from last year, there were lots of changes between now and when we submitted the grant. So the yeah. is very supportive of that. So it just gives them a snapshot of what they can expect. Good. For public involvement, stakeholder engagement, uh, I referenced uh, a meeting that we had with the FAA on uh, November 19th. Um, so we discussed uh, kind of all the items that, that we brought forth this, this morning. Um, and, uh, and outside of that, uh, you know, for engagement, stakeholder engagement, uh, kind of a quiet month. Uh, looking forward, we do have, uh, um, you know, we continue to have um, the information kiosks. Um, we're looking forward to a, a tenant open house in the spring. Upcoming meeting date specifically. This is the the latest. This is why I'm becoming more of a meeting manager than a, an engineer. But um, the FAA would like to discuss with uh, SEH and uh, Thor if you're available um, to discuss the construction safety plan for Phase One. Um, and this is specifically the certain inspector um, who would like to just comment on just how construction is going to happen, where the vehicles will go. It's more of an operational thing than than anything that. Uh, have you set the date for that? Uh, yes, Tracy Schmidt was uh, hoping for November 30th at 11 a.m. So that Friday. is this Friday at 11 a.m. Um, and again, I, I don't think, um, you know, if you can't make it, it's not the end of the world. Um, what's driving this is SEH submitted uh, what, what they call a safety plan, which is um, coordination for between the contractor and the FAA to say during these days, construction is going to happen here with a maximum height of this. Then the FAA takes that information, puts it in their system, and it generates, um, you know, notums. You know, and, and Thor will see these notums when construction happens, but, you know, that instrument approach procedures aren't available or taxiways aren't available. So they just want to kind of go through those operational steps. Um, so I think, Thor, if you're available, I think that's great. If you're, uh, sure. uh, if you're unable to make it, we'll definitely take notes and share with the group. But it's it's more how we show what the contractor can do on the plans. So. And are we still looking at uh, having the um, bituminous plant 
on the airport? No, and that's actually what's driving the changes as uh, KGM has indicated they want that off the airport. So we had to redo this whole safety plan to this. And the initial one said, okay, yep, they have the option to have a bituminous plant on the airport, which would require trucks driving down the taxiway, which would be very impactful for, for all the aircraft doing that. KGM has indicated they have a spot off the airport that's much more affordable for them to use um, instead of setting up a plant, which is great because they have that off-site it negates the point of using the taxiway for vehicles. Eliminates um, a lot of yeah. yeah. So they'll be coming in off the north side of the airport, um, you know, via the gate up there. Good. Um, so they'll be just kind of their own own world up there, which I think is very good. Um, so we resubmitted that for comment to the FAA, and they just have a few comments on how that looks. Thank you. And then uh, SkyWest, uh, that was we just confirmed that December third at 10 a.m. And then we have the FAA project coordination meeting December 7th at 8 a.m. So, lots of coordination. It's, uh, moving along, you know, I think we're, we're getting a good conversation with the FAA. Um, you know. if, if I may add to that, the reminder that uh, once again, uh, I just can't emphasize enough of all the projects that, that I've been involved in. The FAA has never been, uh, in my sense, is so supportive. Very, very supportive. And, 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 and I mean, we're talking about the whole team. You bet. You know, and, and and again, credit to Lindsay. She's Lindsay, she's Andy, Gina, and her. Tracy. I mean, uh, you know, four four people. Uh, it's fantastic. Giving their time. It's really good. It's 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 rare because I'm not getting the sense that other airports are getting the kind of attention that we are. I think that's accurate. Right. Probably didn't have some she was really scrambling on oh, portions, absolutely. portions of this and getting support from both SCH and FAA to get those documents and images. What was the learning curve right there? Again, a reminder of the value of the I'm serious. Well, we well, already knew that. that. Well, we didn't sure. Okay. Lots of good happening. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right. Is that all? Benita, anything? She's on the phone. Benita, anything that you have? No, thanks for uh, letting me listen in. Very good. Is each Christmas party? Are we invited? We, we, yeah, by the way. Uh, Wade and I are going down to AMC. Who's who's doing the SCH booth? Benita, are you going to do it? <laughs> what's, what's the date? I'll, uh, I'll let you know. It uh, starts on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. This this week. Oh, December 2nd? 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at the, at the Double Tree in Bloomington. We'll all be there. <laughs> Stop by our office. We'll throw, we'll throw something together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. All right. Um, don't see anything listed under old business. Does anyone have any uh, old business? Now we'll move to new business, and we have the uh, uh, local airline service action committee meeting in Duluth on December fifth at nine thirty in the morning. Actually, going up uh, north, huh? The, yeah, they're going to have it at the Duluth Airport. So, um, Tom uh, is going to host it there. And uh, anyone that would like to attend? Move for approval. Okay, motion by Commissioner McBride to approve uh, travel expenses for anyone wanting to attend the LASAC meeting. Second. Second by Commissioner Briggs. <coughs> Discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion is carried. What time was that meeting? 9.30. Oh, December 5th, right? December 5th at the uh, Second. Second. terminal building Wednesday, Wednesday, right? In Duluth. Yes, Wednesday. Tuesday, because we did not wake up. It's good to get out of here early. Well, let, let me know because we're, we're, we're planning for lunch, so if you yeah, think I, you're going to attend, I, I, We're dismissed at noon on Tuesday. So. Okay. And we'll, we should be over by probably 1 o'clock. The meeting will be over. So. All right. Item B under new business. We'll, we'll let you know. So. Okay. Yeah. The KEDA lease insurance review. Who's got that one? I can explain a little bit about it. Um, it I recently received our the airport insurance renewal and I was just reviewing through it and I happened to come across the line item that was for the cold weather test buildings. So 
I questioned the insurance company on why the cold weather test building was being insured under the airport and you know if that was actually correct or what building was being insured um, because I knew with PETA that PETA covers the cold weather test all of the cold weather testing buildings so um, after a ton of research on both um, mine and Shireen at uh, Northern Reliable's uh, research and looking into things, um, I discovered under the lease agreement that it states that the airport covers uh, the covers the liability insurance on, on those that building, and so um, currently it's being double covered for whatever reason the insurance company didn't catch it. So um, I'm questioning, do we just continue to let PETA cover the insurance and take it out of the airport lease since all the other buildings are being covered under PETA and the airport doesn't cover any other buildings, you know, other than the airport buildings itself. So um, if that's the case, I think we would just need to amend the lease and have that put in there that the keto will hold that insurance policy on the building. Yeah, I, I think it's proper to have uh, uh, PETA uh, cover the insurance. You don't have any, any issues with that. Uh, and I am at the same insurance company. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I had is, it, is, there, is there a refund? You know, double she, I asked and she yeah. said unfortunately there's not. I had Tim out there last year to clarify that because there was some confusion about cold boxes. So I brought him on site and showed him exactly what PETA was was managing and he took pictures. So I, uh, historically I, I think there was some confusion and I thought it was clarified but he did it formally. So we need to amend this uh, this lease agreement to just say that uh, uh, the airport will uh, cover those buildings that are not covered by Economic Development Authority insurance. Uh, yeah, yeah. If we just take that whole section out and say that the PETA will be yeah. covering that. Okay. okay. All right. Insurance. Motion to so uh, move. Motion by Commissioner Nevin to uh, revise the lease agreement and uh, reduce the coverage by the airport on the buildings that are covered by. Yeah. Second. Second by Commissioner Pavlik. That cleans them up. Further discussion? It's funny though, you know, if you, if you had to pay me, they're not going to pay double. Right. Right. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that works. <laughs> no. All right. No further discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. And Lease agreement is approved. Thank you. Carol's here. I have to behave. No. All right. I'm good now. All right. Let's go to um, manager's report. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, uh, fortunately, very fortunate, we have not a lot, a lot, a lot of snow events. We have a lot of snow accumulation. And so we're towards the end of November, and that's, that's a very, very good thing. So no no complaints there. Well, we've got some snow coming tomorrow, two to four, I'm guessing. So we, nothing we can't handle. Um, on an, on an interesting standpoint of airport impacts, uh, a good friend of mine owns a charter company, a large charter company out of Marshall, Minnesota, runs the FBO there, uh, Pete Johnson, old friend of our families. And uh, as you notice that Swans has you know, announced that they've sold 80% uh, of the company uh, to a South Korean company. There's, there's even a Samsung couple, so which is kind of interesting. Uh, but they're justifiably concerned because the community in Marshall direct impact to the airport, they're, they're just probably concerned about what there's, there seems to be some, some maybe some, uh, uh, that, you know, some, some future uh, events that, that may reduce the, the, the swan's impact on Marshall and will be very negative, obviously, so, again, that's a, not, not a good thing for, for the, the community. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, again, uh, working along with the project, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to work with, with the SEH and with the, uh, with the press and the team, Rick and Steve, and, uh, and it's, it's always a detail game, no worries. On a 
on a different note, but it's kind of interesting stat. I read an, art, I read an article on uh, Boeing CEO a few days ago, and he was talking about growth in, in China. Uh, it's fascinating. They're looking at a, at, a, at a growth in the Asian Pacific theater in that area. They're, they're anticipating an additional 140 million people per year taking their first airplane ride. It's 140 million people per year. But the stat that really got my attention was as follows, that globally, less than 20% of the Earth's population has ever been on an airplane, which is, which is a fascinating concept. You know, we take it for granted, right? It's like everything in America. They don't know what they're missing. They don't know what they're missing, <laughs> right? And the go versus the uh, <laughs> Other than that, uh, no, just just going along. And again, I'm tr truthfully thankful that we're having, having a lot of snow events. It's great. Very good. Group service that I'd ever had with your father. Really? Yes. How old were you? 25. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Questions for Thor? No. Thank you. All right. Secretary's report. Claimants in there uh, again. We're up for the month. Uh, oh, yeah. Not a huge month, but still up. It's great. Uh, it looks like we'll finish the year out pretty strong. I didn't get um, some countries updated in claimants. Do you know what the last uh, the hundred and something yeah, over hundred? I want to say one hundred and twenty. Yeah, approximately. Very like good. Um, then. Uh, Nikki at the journal uh, emailed me and is wondering if the commission would like to advertise or do another holiday advertisement, uh, which was is similar to last year's. Uh, that's in the packet there. I put a copy of the last year's ad, um, and that would be a color ad for one hundred and sixteen dollars and seventy cents. Sure. Motion. I'll second Mr. Brady. Second by Mr. Brady. I think it's important to do that at Christmas time. You're in the spirit of it. Mm -hmm. And for the journal, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Absolutely. Thank you. Last thing I have is uh, Roxana CKRD um, is wondering if the commission would like to do a holiday greeting on the radio station over there as well. Um, it would be a minimum of 25 times on each station of CKRD and CFOB. Um, the range is quite uh, wide for uh, stations. Uh, that cost would be $500. That's ran from the 17th through the 31st of December. At, at your places, I, I've included a uh, ad that was in the uh, Fort Francis Times on last Wednesday, November the 21st, uh, on Bearskin Airlines, and uh, they're advertising their rates, which is kind of interesting at the uh, at the top of the ad, and then uh, home for the holidays shows their. Uh, uh, overall impact on uh, communities in uh, northwestern Ontario and down to uh, down to North Bay. So, uh, I thought they went into uh, to Toronto. They must not. Uh, must, must end uh, down to Sudbury, North Bay. Flies over our house twice a day, doesn't it, Carol? Or is it, is it twice a day? Before? Yeah. They, come in? yeah. They, must, they must be home again. Yeah. On the International Falls to the regional approach. Yeah, and they veer off as they get. They get confused once in a while. It's got a unique sound, I can tell you that. So they're they're advertising. I don't know um, what our ad. What, is this a thirty second ad on the radio? Fifteen, 15 seconds. 15, is it? Yeah. Twenty five times fifteen seconds. Oh, only fifteen seconds. You know, I don't know. Um, we do have ads running there currently for the month, but I don't yeah. recall how many ads that we have running. This is just an additional special. So. 15 seconds is a pretty short uh, 
they don't they don't see the value well, of that. Yeah, that's more than at all. Right. You know, I, I would rather um, sometime in the Fort Francis Times run an ad that shows International Falls to Minneapolis to Toronto because that, that flight that uh, goes from Minneapolis up to Toronto is utilized by Canadians. And uh, maybe having that uh, kind of an ad sometime, I'd rather put that in the uh, in the newspaper and spend the money on that. Yeah. So we'll pass on that. Uh, CKDR and CFOP. Further, Kyra. That is all I have. Very good. Thank you. Good work. Move to uh, reports from members. Commissioner Madeline. Everything's going good. Moving forward. Great. Commissioner McBride. I uh, just made that little comment about. Well, exact meaning in Duluth being coming up north because last week we had a seminar at Rainy River, the college, uh, what the county had for uh, you know employee safety, you know, and, and that type of stuff. And this, this guy was a retired police officer from Minneapolis, and he had never been north of Duluth. Yeah, in his whole life, the first time he'd been north of Duluth. So he said, "You folks are really up here." <laughs> But you know, Minnesota is a long state from the border to border. I mean, it's almost as bad as Illinois, if you've ever been with Illinois. Oh, yeah. It yeah. takes you two days to get through it, I think. Over 400 so, miles. No, it's just I, I don't think people appreciate, you know, how big this state is and, and, and how we do survive up here. They're tough people. Tough well, people. We're always expected to travel. Yeah. Well, and, and, and they said, what do you do for shopping? I said, well, we shop here. Well, what do you got to get something special? I said, well, there's people trying to, to, or to Bemidji or, or Virginia or even to Duluth. You travel to Duluth to shop. It's a, well, people they even go down to Minneapolis to shop. So he started talking about what well, that three hours of shop. He says that's crazy. And then he started talking. It takes him an hour and ten minutes every day, one way oh, to work. Yeah. I said, so yeah. don't be yeah. talking about us going shopping. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, people don't realize you know uh, distances, distances, and, and but International Falls traveled well. I don't think we've well, ever even had all the years I was in the air guard. It was surprising how many people in Duluth. And never been up here. Other than that, the good, good meeting yesterday at the county board. The things moving forward. Commissioner Pavlik, and, and we got a new, new road, and we're going to make an application for County Road 103, is it? Which is the Anchorage Road to get that upgraded. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful road when it's done. Preservation standards. Yeah. Which was the preservation? Is that Anchorage, Anchorage Road or Anchorage South Falbrock? Falbrock, that circle. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we, we approved that. And other than that, uh, no snow. We're, we're saving money, city and the county. Not plowing snow, getting right. everything's done. It's wonderful. Fair Airport, also. Wonderful. That's all. Very good. Thank you. Commissioner Briggs. Uh, I had a call the other day about someone that uh, had a problem trying to make a connection. And we got down to the meter, but what it was is that they're flying out of the only, on a Saturday and you only have the afternoon flight, so they couldn't make connections to get to where they had to go that same day, so it didn't show that, they could, that it was a flight. Well, after some more conversation with Holly, it, it sounds like the Saturday afternoon flight is going to go to a Saturday morning flight. Holly's been harping at Sky West and Delta about, you know, if we're only going to have one flight a day, let's make it the morning, or the morning yep. flight to the right. afternoon. So they People listen, have they're going to change it to effective in uh, January. So. And she's still working on them to try and get the Wednesday flight to the yes. morning flight too. So, That's interesting so she keeps harping. She, 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 she's a good advocate for I uh, uh, brought that up last month or a couple months ago. A person booked out of here and it said did not show a Saturday flight. Right. right. And I said, well, I know there is. He goes, well, it doesn't show on the schedule. So it doesn't just, show if you're trying to book a flight from right. from here to, let's say, Florida. Because they don't think it's all that. Right. Tampa. Because this one was to Tampa. Well, you could get, you know, it's because when you leave at that time, 
you're not going to yeah. get a no connection, connection that can get you to Tampa that day, so yep. it shows that no. No, there's no play. Yep. It'll be right just improve things. IML to Minneapolis and then book it Minneapolis you know, to Atlanta and other things. Oh, that would be great. Can you do that? And still can't believe the mileage we get out of our sign up there. People have come off and said, see that ice box of the nation, and they got their phones up and they're taking pictures. So, of time that. Great. So it was a good move of us taking that old sign and putting it up in there. Didn't sell it to American Pickers, did we? No, the hopper was <laughs> All right. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Nevin? Just again, a reminder if you look at the monthly bills that how much money we're able to leverage. In. Uh, each and every engine with the airport is for the region. Uh, it's a kind of reminder. And as well, we had some first time visitors that are yeah. actually looking to yeah. conduct cold weather testing here, international visitors. And one of the big selling points that they're using is that our airport, the, the ability to access uh, here from the So uh, that's one of the things that they're bringing back is that they put together a sales pitch for the uh, airport. And they, they have a job. plant, the new plant in North Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. They were a nice gentleman. Yeah. They were cool. Can I add one thing, Mr. Yes. Uh, Carol and I had a breakdown in the roof with our vehicle. Yeah. And uh, so we're, we're stuck <clears throat> down there because they had to they had to keep it, but they still got it. Uh, so I didn't know what what are we going to do here. Uh, we're stuck in the loop. So from the place where we got the car to, we called the... Uh, Avis was the first one in, in the book. Carol called that number. They came out from the airport, picked us up, took us, and then took us back to the airport, and we went through the whole process, run the cars, very reasonable. And they said, you know, we told them our dilemma, and they said, no problem, just drop it off International Falls when you get there. Yeah, sure. And I talk about wonderful service. I, yeah, so I wanted a little shout out to them for uh, how much we appreciated it. Gee, they're prompt and great services, pretty neat. Their yeah. local rep here, Tara, does a very good work for them. So, yeah, it sure does. Just as Paul was saying about, about the money we just paid to pay off bills, and, and yesterday we had the county board we approved for the sewer district, we paid that $1.3 million out. I mean, there's a lot of money being spent in communities yes. for construction. Yes. Well, well, the last good. thing, if I could, sure. is the, uh, the whole taxi thing kind of Calm yes. down up there, it's all good? Okay. Yeah, it's all good. Because I was out there the other day and it looked like everything was We're good. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I would uh, include in your packet uh, just a piece on the uh, FAA and it's great just to be a part of um, FAA coordinates 43,000 flights a day. And amazing. And at any one time, there's 5,000 aircraft in the sky, which is, yeah. You can look at that nationwide yeah. radar. That, that fly by me or whatever that yeah. is, and you look at this, and it's just, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's great to be part of a system that large, and, uh, you know, I don't, we only contribute two flights a day or one flight a day, Seven given that whatever day it is, but, five but it's days. certainly great to be a part of a system like that. <clears throat> uh, let's see, our next meeting is scheduled for the uh, 19th. Yep. Yeah. And if you're interested, then we could do a tour of the uh, of the phase two at that point, uh, if folks are interested. Any uh, last minute thoughts on uh, on the uh, tables or the chairs? I think, Mr. I, I think for the, you know, the, 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 chair, the table probably going to have to be something custom. The chairs, I think we can look locally. I just, so. I just priced something out a little bit to see what it is comparable to those prices. Yep. I know you can get it for better than 400 bucks for chairs like this. I think we paid these, I think we paid maybe 120 bucks a chair for this. Right. I got similar to that, put in my hair stand, I paid uh, yeah. 60 bucks. Your boss. That's good enough. Just for, take a look at it. Yeah, but I, no, it I could agree. still look at maybe even oh, get a cost on the table. The 19. My, my input is my yeah, input is can't, you can't have the table larger. I mean, I understand. I, I I understand that I, I'm the free space. I got that because we hold the uh, at times we have the LASAC meeting there, and 
and folks are eating as well as oh, having their yeah, this papers out there. Sure. Look, look at us. I know uh, the table is larger than that. Well, I would yeah. like to think that Sheldon Zook can build us a table that size for less than 1900 bucks. Very possible. For the local it would, material. It would be uh, nice and, it would, and it would be, you know, nice, regular. Nice laminated table. Or nice no. laminated. You have to incorporate oh. AV and power. What time is that? that? They're the only requirement. Make sure that, yeah, I'm sure you can do it. I'm, I'm sure you could. That's that's why, why is that conflicting with us? Well, on the 19th, are you going to have a meeting on the 19th? Yes. And he has the Voyagers National Park sewer that day, but they are going to have it in the falls at the park center at 10. Ryan, so Ryan's got it too. Yeah, at so you can probably go to both. It's what? at 10 in the morning. 10 in the morning? Yeah, I, I would think our December meeting is going to be fairly, sure. uh, yeah. fairly short. We'll have an update uh, Good. Oh. on, on the, uh, Thanks for reminding the project and, and on the is that phase the two sewer, or is that the is that is that the clean water port? Yeah. That you have done on can, can you make it uh, ten thirty? Any chance that they would get old Jason and move to ten thirty? Just just uh, thinking this morning, and yeah. we might be out of here by ten, but I just think giving you a little breathing room. Jason's a bit more tomorrow. There might be a peace coach meeting to see if we can be put up to 1030. Give notice out on that. All right. So 8 o'clock here on December the 19th. Nothing further to come before the... Do you want me to look at pricing and go get a price from Sheldon on a table? Sure. I think you can... Probably a nice one. A very nice one. A very nice one. Yes. And it, and and would build it to a perfect spec. Yeah. Right. right. And, and right. Carol, can you get us a deer off in the right powers for it? He probably can throw that in. Jason Ford. His family could come and sing Acapella when we when we when we when we christen that baby. Yeah. With with apple juice. All right. Anything important? Let me just pass around the uh, the ad that's going to be in the fish. Oh yeah, this fish Minnesota. Fish Minnesota. It's, 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 for the Explore Minnesota. Through Explore Minnesota, I believe, but it's called. I guess it's called Fish Minnesota or something like that. Speaking of Fish Minnesota, I don't want to go too far off the tracks here, but just see the guy has the record, the, the record, or the like it. Rainy River. Rainy River. Yeah. Fascinating. Basically. Well, it's an incredible fishery, isn't it? Isn't it? it is. It's it's getting fish. stronger. And getting stronger. Yeah. Okay, if there's nothing further to come before the commission, we'll stand adjourned. Hey, Bob. Thank you.